and is alive forevermore. And you hold the keys of death and the keys of life. We thank you, Jesus. Be glorified and be magnified, Lord. Thank you for giving us another time to share your word. May your word come with life. May your word come with healing and deliver us and increase in every good and perfect gift. And may you be glorified and magnified now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. Amen. John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. The title of the message is Believing. Believing. John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. The scripture says, Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of of God that you believe in him whom he sent. So they came to Jesus and the question is uh, what must we do? What must we do that we may do the works of God? Plural. And Jesus responding he said this is the work of God. Singular. That you believe in Jesus Christ. What must we do? I want to begin by saying God created us to be, not to do. God created us to be, not to do. That doesn't mean that we are not supposed to do. But our doing must be determined by our being. We are human beings. We are not human doings. So our doings should come from our being. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, Jeremiah 1 verse 5, God said to prophet Jeremiah when he was hesitating from fulfilling his mission the Lord said to Jeremiah before I formed you Jeremiah 1 verse 5 before I formed you in your mother's womb before you were, I knew you before you were born I sanctified you and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations so each one of us we have been created to be. There is something you are made to be. And then once you connect with what you are to be, then now you can do. And the moment you, you become that be, that being, that, and you believe in what God created you to be, then not even the gates of hell shall be able to prevail against him. Whatever hindrance, whatever, you know, dividing that is between you and uh, your destiny and your blessing, you shall prevail. It shall not prevail against you. But the problem is that, that humanity, we are focusing so much on our doing that we have neglected who we are. In fact, some of us, we are angry, we are mad with ourselves because we feel we don't do enough. We are upset, we are frustrated because every other day we are, we are thinking, what more can I do for, to be fulfilled? We think that our relationship with God is a relationship of performance. But I want, to, I want you to take it from me that God initially, before you do, he created you to be. You look at creation. God created Adam and Eve in his image. He created them in his image so that they can be like him. And then later on, he would put them in the Garden of Eden the Garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. So I want to say to you that there is something God created you to be. And there, there are three points I want to share with us. Point number one, we were made to believe. We were made to believe. In Genesis 1 verse 27, Genesis 1 verse 27, the Bible says God created man and that man is not male. That man is not male. That man is mankind. It is both male and female. God created man in his image, and then it says that male and female, he created them. Now, when you go to Genesis chapter 2, we have details now of how male was created or was made, and how female was made. In fact, the way they were made in the Hebrew, the Old Testament is in Hebrew, and uh, the way, the, the, the description of how male was created, Adam, and how Eve was made is very different. In Genesis 2 verse 7, Genesis 2 verse 7, it's talking about the male, Adam, how he was made. 
God made man. That is male. And the word there is uh, he squeezed man. He took mud and squeezed. That is how man was made, male. That's how male was made. When you go to verse 22, he took a rib from, from, from Adam and he made a woman. Now that maid is different from the maid in verse 7. The maid in verse 22 is he fashioned. You know, he fashioned a woman. A man was squeezed, but a woman was fashioned. He was fashioned for Adam. Then, they, then the Bible says that they were created and then they were put in the garden of Eden and God gave instructions. But we know the instructions that God gave, he required to be believed. By not believing the instructions and the, 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 the assignment that God is giving to man, then man ended up losing the benefit the, 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 the garden of Eden. Man was made to enjoy relationship with God and he was made to enjoy the garden of Eden. But the day man failed to believe, the, the day he chose to, to, to put his back on God and do his own thing, the day he chose that he shall not continue believing God, that is when he lost his intimacy with God. And that is when he lost his place, the Garden of Eden. Bible says in John, uh, Romans 14, verse 23, Romans 14, verse 23, anything without faith, it is sin. Whatever you do without believing, Bible says it is sin. So as you continue in your life, if you're going to enjoy life, if you're going to enjoy God and enjoy your Garden of Eden, you need not just to start believing, but you need, I mean, you need to understand that you are created to relate with God by faith. By believing, we enjoy the benefit of salvation. Now, if you don't believe, you don't lose your salvation. No, no, no. If today you choose not to believe, you don't lose your salvation. Your salvation is determined by your believing in God. That you believed in God, that you, be you became a Christian. Your name was written in the book of life. So your salvation is secure. It is sealed. But then, because you are failed to believe to continue to believe in God, then you, you struggle in this world. In heaven you will go, but then you will have seasons of struggle, particularly in the area you refuse to believe. So we need to believe. If you refuse to believe God in regard to your health, you have eternal life in heaven, but then you struggle physically, you struggle financially, you struggle in business, you struggle in, mi business, in ministry because uh, you have refused to believe in God in that particular area. And so for Adam and Eve, they were created by God and they were created to believe. Number two, number two, we believe God first. We believe God first. We were created to believe, but then our believing our believing must start in believing in God. In Genesis 2, verse 15 to 17, Genesis 2, 15 to 17, God created man, woman, and man and woman, and he put them in the garden of Eden. And he said to them, you shall eat from every tree, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not touch it. And God said, the day you eat, you shall die. The day you eat, you shall die. Now, the devil came. And uh, the devil said to, to humanity, to, to Adam and Eve, you shall not die. God knows that the day you eat, you shall be like him. You see, God wanted man to believe him first. To believe him first. first. There is that which God had said. This has nothing to do with rules, with do's and don'ts. No. This has everything to do with uh, the profit of man, the blessing of man. It was not an issue of parameters and restrictions to man. It was an issue of that if you believe what I'm telling you, without seeking to experience for you to know on yourself, then you shall continue to enjoy life. But the problem is, uh, and that is a problem we suffer with, uh, we want or we think uh, that experience is the best teacher. Experience is a teacher, but it is not necessarily the best teacher. If you can learn by hearing, and hearing the word of God, so that you believe, you see, every parent, you want your children to believe you. 
when you give, you know, when you give a direction, direction or instruction to your children, you know as a parent that this is for their own good. It is for their own benefit. So you want them to believe you. But then if they chose not to believe you, then they will have to learn through experience. The problem with experience is that it is costly. It may cost your life, it may cost your education, it may cost your future, it may cost your health. That is a problem of experience. It will hurt you. It is going to mess up with your life. And that happens to Adam and Eve. God spoke to them and he wanted them to believe. But they refused to believe. They refused to continue. You know, God wanted them to focus on him. Think of Peter in Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. Jesus is walking on water. There are, there are waves. There is a wind. There are storms in the, in the middle of the sea. And then Peter says to Jesus, If it is you, Lord, tell me to come. And Jesus says, Come. There in Matthew 14. And Peter jumps out of the boat. And he begins to walk on water. You see, that is believing Jesus. That is you know, staying focused on Jesus. That is putting your attention on the Lord. A good decision, a commendable decision. But the problem is that he looked down. No, he started so well, but then he stopped believing. He stopped believing the command of Jesus to him. And that is when he, he lost his miracle. That is when he started sinking. You will walk in miracle. You will walk in your blessing. If you stay focused, if you allow God to speak fast in your life uh, and you don't, you know, you don't get tempted to, to believe the circumstances, to believe the situations. The moment he removed his eyes from Jesus, he started sinking. He took his cry to the Lord for him to be delivered, for him to be saved. And I want to say this, even when Peter is sinking, the beauty of the story is this. Jesus never left. Jesus never vanished. He remained faithful to Peter. You see, the Lord's faithfulness does not depend on your believing. No, no, no. The Lord, God's faithfulness to you and to me does not depend on your believing. 2 Timothy 2.13. 2 Timothy 2.13. The Bible says that though we are faithless, he remains faithful. He can never deny himself. So Jesus is still there, even when you're not believing. He's still there, available for you. But the problem is that uh, you will be seeking, though he's there. You are believing. Peter changed his mind. All of a sudden, he cried to the Lord. He started again focusing on him. He put his eyes on him. And when he cried to Jesus, the Lord picked him up. And you know, if you look at the scriptures, or those, that one, even when he was under the water, Jesus was still over the water. Even when Peter was under the water, Jesus was still over the water. And even in your situation, this is what I'm, I'm putting to you. This is what I want you to take from me. That even though you feel you are drowning, the Lord is faithful to you and to us all and is above whatever you are going through. So he's asking you, are you willing to believe him? Are you willing to believe God? Believe God first. In 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 20, 2 Chronicles 20 verse 20, Bible says that believe God and you shall be established. Believe his prophet and you're going to prosper. You want to be established? You want to prosper? Believe God. Believe, put God first. Put God first in whatever is you're struggling in, in whatever circumstances you are in today. Believe God. Put your focus on God. So I've said number one, we were made to believe. Adam and Eve they were made, put in the Garden of Eden, and God gave them a word. A word to their own profit. A word to their own benefit. You can eat from every tree, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. The day you eat, you shall surely die. And God wants to be believed first. Number three, we must continue to believe. We must continue to believe. We must continue. Believing it is a starting point for our salvation, but then we must continue. You know, we must, you, cannot, you cannot stay in the faith of 10 years ago when you got born again. That is good that you are born again 10 years ago. But then, if today you are going to experience 
the blessings of God, the victory of God in your life, you need to continue believing. John 20 verse 30 to 31. John 20 verse 30 to 31. Bible says that very, very, very truly, Jesus did many other signs which are not written in this book. And then verse 31 says, but these are written that you may believe in the name of the Son of God. And that by believing, you may have life. Now, that believing, there are two believing there. There is a first believing. The, the things are written here that you may believe. But then, believing, the idea is that by continuing to believe, you will have life. The reason is because there are two kinds of life. The first belief, it helps you to have eternal life. Your name is written in the book of life. You are secure to go to heaven. But the second believing, which is continuing to believe, that guarantees abundant life here on earth. You have eternal life in heaven. But then you're not going to heaven a defeated, miserable, embarrassed Christian. You continue to believe uh, so that you can continue to have abundant life uh, here on earth. First John 5, 13. First John 5, 13. Bible says that uh, these things I have written to you that you may, you, may, you may know. These things I have written to you that you may know you have eternal life in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, and that you may continue to believe. These things are written. These things are written so that you can know the day you believed and you became a child of God, you got eternal life. But then John is saying, both in the Gospel of John and in the, in the letters of John, John the Revelator is saying to us, you believe, you get eternal life. But then you need to continue to believe for you to have abundant life. So, the day you believed in Jesus, you are going to heaven. But here on earth, it matters how. It matters how you are going to heaven. Whatever area you feel oppressed, you feel you are struggling, you are lacking salvation in that area because you have not believed. In other words, what I'm saying, you need to continue to believe the word of God in every area of your life. Salvation is twofold. Salvation is twofold. There is a salvation of this, you know, there's a salvation of our spirit. There's a salvation of our heart. There's a salva the salvation of eternal life. But after that salvation of eternal life, and you don't do, that one is by grace. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9. By grace are you saved through faith in Jesus Christ. It is a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So for you to have eternal life, you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That is the salvation of your spirit, but then your soul. Your soul now is the salvation of every day. That one may require you to continue to believe. Because Ephesians 2 8, it says that we are saved by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. But then you go to Philippians 2 and verse 12. Philippians 2 verse 12. Bible says that now, brethren, even as you have obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Eternal life, it is by grace, no works, lest any man should boast. But your abundant life, your blessings, your victory in every sphere of your life, it will require you to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Luke 12 verse 32. Luke 12 verse 32. Bible says, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. See, you believe initially you are given the kingdom. But now you need to continue to believe in the revelation that God is giving to you, in that rhema word, in that word for the moment, that God is, you know, is releasing to you. Now, the kingdom, you believe you are given. But then you go to Matthew 11, verse 12. Matthew 11, verse 12. From the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent taken by force. There is a kingdom that is given, but there is also a kingdom that you take, and you take it by force. You take it by continuing 
to believe. Matthew 11, verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29. Matthew 11, verse 28, 29. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. I shall give you rest. That is the first believing. For eternal life, you can't be living to Jesus. You are given eternal life. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest to your souls. There is a rest that is given, that's eternal life, but there is a rest that you find that is abundant life. That is the victory I'm talking about. We were made to believe, but we must believe God first, but not just first. Not just 20 years ago, not just 30 years ago, not just 2 years ago. When you believed and you got eternal life, you must continue to believe every day, every week, every month uh, for you to, con to continue enjoying the blessings and the victory of God in your life. At the Garden of Eden, there were two who wanted to be believed. At the Garden of Eden, there were two who wanted to be believed. There is God who said you can eat from every other tree, but from this tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. And God gave them a choice. You can choose to believe me, or you can choose to reject me. And then uh, the devil came, and he said, you wanted also to be believed. And he said to Adam and Eve, God knows that the day you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall be like him. And Adam and Eve chose to believe the devil. Who are you believing today? Who is speaking into your life today? In whatever area, is it in your job or in your health or your finances, where you're feeling there, there are difficulties? Who are you believing? Because there is a destiny for you. There is a blessing for you. There is a victory for you. There is a miracle for you. But what shall determine your entering into your canon, your abundant life? It is your believing. Hebrews 3 verse 19. Hebrews 3 verse 19. The Bible says that, that many out of that 3 million people in the wilderness who are being led by Moses and Joshua, many didn't, get, didn't enter into the land of Canaan. Not because of devotion or dedication. Not because of piety or purity. No, no, no. The Bible says clearly there, they failed to enter into their destiny. They fail to enter into their rest because of unbelief. It is unbelief that hinders people from, get, from, from getting to the land, to their blessings, to their promises, to their destiny, to the place that God has ordained for them. And therefore, I'm inviting you to believe. Relationship with God, it's not about so much your performance. It's about your believing in the promises of God. You believe first in that which Jesus accomplished. But after you believe that which Jesus accomplished, you must continue believing in the promises of God. Whisp Ignore the whisperings of the devil. The devil will whisper to you your past failures, or even your present faults, or even your future fears, mm -hmm. to, to distract you from believing the promises of God. We must continue to believe. John chapter 3, verse 14. John chapter 3, verse 14, all the way to verse 18. The Bible says, As Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes shall not perish, verse 15, but have everlasting life, verse 16. That popular verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever whosoever includes you that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life verse 17 for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but so that the world can be saved through him verse 18 Anyone who believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe in him is condemned already 
And if you go to verse 19, it says that, and this is a condemnation. That light has come into the world. That men love darkness because their deeds are evil. What I'm, what I'm communicating is this. God, from the beginning, he has wanted to have a relationship with you, a relationship of faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. God created Adam and Eve, and he desired them to believe him. But even when they failed, he sent the last Adam. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God wants you to have eternal life, and not just in heaven, but also abundant life here on earth. Hebrews 10 verse 39. Hebrews 10 verse 39. The Bible says, we are not of those who draw back to perdition. You know, we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who continue to the saving of our soul, not our spirit. Our spirit is already saved. The day we believed in Jesus, when you surrendered your life and you became a born again Christian, your spirit was saved. You have eternal life. But then, we are not of those who draw back. We didn't start in the faith and now we are walking in the flesh. Now we are walking, you know, in fear. No, no, no. We have continued to believe in the promises of God. And our souls are being saved day after day. We continue to see the victory, the glory of God, the riches of God, the miracles of God. Because we are not of those who draw back. We are those who continue to the saving of our souls. Shall we pray? We thank you, Lord.